Hey guys, welcome to VoiceOver Freedom on YouTube. On this channel, we teach you how you can make money using your voice, recording voiceovers from the comfort of your home. This is exactly what I do. I've been doing it for over 10 years and I absolutely love it. So let's talk about a very important topic today and that is your recording booth. This is super important. I get asked about it all the time. So I wanna give different suggestions for different budgets, for different um, places, sizes. Um, different scenarios. Now, my specialty is making recording booths at home. This is what I've done my whole life. I've never really had to go to a fancy recording studio, although I have gone to some, but I prefer being at home so I don't have to drive anywhere, so I don't have to go anywhere. I love being in the comfort of my home, being able to just get up in the morning and go to the booth and start recording something. It's just awesome. So let me teach you a couple different ways that you can make a booth at your home or at your apartment or at your place. So the first thing is you need to find a place that's quiet. Now, this could be your closet, your walk-in closet. Um, those are ideally some really great places and a lot of voiceover artists pick them because of that. The size is great, it's not too huge and hopefully it's not too crammed. You don't want it to be too crammed where you're, you know, neck to neck to clo with clothes and different things, but hopefully it's a decent size that you can stand in. Like the one I'm in right now is a really great size because I can move around, I can move my body, my arms, and I can express myself and I can put up the padding on the wall to make it so that it's treated. Um, you can use something like a bedroom. It's a little bit bigger. Well, it's a lot bigger, but if you Make sure that it's treated. If you make sure that there's no echoes in your room, there's no reverberations. Empty walls or uncovered flooring cause a lot of reverberations. Um, but yes, you can do a bedroom, especially if it's a smaller size bedroom. Things that I would avoid are places like the kitchen or the living room. In most cases, those places are just too big and are just too echoey. And it's just really hard to treat those just because of the size and, and the design is a little awkward sometimes. And the floor, there's just a lot of flooring and especially if it's not carpeted. I really highly suggest that you have a carpeted space. The carpet really helps so much because the less covered walls you have, the better, the less covered surfaces. And that's one of the keys of having a good booth is you wanna make sure that each surface in your booth is covered as much as possible. Now, it doesn't have to be completely covered. As you can see in my booth, you can still see some of the white from the wall, and that's okay because I still get a dry sound. It doesn't have to be 100% covered, although you can, it just has to be covered enough so that you get a good, clean, dry sound from it. That means no echoes, no reverberations. And that's easier to do with a smaller booth and a smaller size space. So you can use things like blankets if you are on a budget. You can use a mattress topper. Moving blankets from the hardware store are also great. Clothes in your closet, those help a little bit. Um, it's not enough alone, but thick blankets, thick pillows. Um, I personally think that if you have the budget, go with some sound panels. These are two inch sound panels, which you can hang in your booth. Um, acoustic panels are even better. These are what professionals use. You can see that on this side here. This is a professional acoustic panel and they're very dense. They have a wooden frame and just they really kill that echo and sound in your space, but they are more expensive. So that is why I've combined one of these with several of these and it works perfect. So sound panels, foam panels, acoustic panels are going to be the professional way to go about it. And they also make some artsy ones too. I haven't really gotten any of the artsy ones because these are just great for me, but they come in different aesthetics, different colors, and different styles. So I'll leave a link to some of my recommendations below. But yeah, that's the professional way to go about it. But again, if you're starting on a budget, there's nothing wrong with using the things you have around your home. I highly recommend doing that in fact. You can get creative and you can start to understand what works and what doesn't work. And this trains you in making a good recording booth because you're training your ear to listen to what works and what doesn't and how the sound changes with everything that you add. So let's say you don't have a recording booth or let's say you're not at home. What about an apartment or a Airbnb? You can make these anywhere you go. I've traveled the world for a year and I've gone to Airbnbs and made a booth in my Airbnb. As long as you have blankets, pillows, and 
most of your walls are covered, you can make a booth anywhere you go. I've even recorded it in my car. Now, here's the thing. If you record in your car, it's doable, but it's gonna be very tricky. And I only recommend you do that if you know what you're doing, if you've had some experience under your belt, because it's harder to set up in the car. It's bumpier. Um, it's harder to treat it because there's windows and there's traffic outside. And sometimes you move around in the cushion and your mic is very sensitive. So it'll pick up little sounds like that. But if you're able to get your mic set up in a way that you can record without moving it too much, you can read your script and you can treat it um, so that your car windows are covered. The seats in your car are actually pretty decent at treating your car already. So a car, that's why a car is an easy, easy to treat in a way because it's already half treated, but it is tricky to, just to set up in there. So you can set up in a closet, you can set up at home, you can set up in an apartment, in an Airbnb, using the things that you have around your house. And in my course, Voice Over Freedom, I show you exactly how to do that. I take you inside my different setups and give you different strategies and techniques and ideas that you can use for yourself so if you want to check that out, which you should, the link is in my description. I hope you get started and I hope this has helped inspire you to start creating your first vocal booth today. If you have questions, reach out to me. I answer DMs on Instagram, so I'm pretty active everywhere. Let me know and I'll see you in the next video.